Well, we've had a fantastic day. I'm Mike Rawlins. I'm chairman of the board. Uh, the Biobank, actually, you may not appreciate this as a charity, but it's uh, also a limited company. Uh, and this trust, the, uh, the two shareholders are the Wellcome Trust and the MRC. And uh, it's a great, so as chairman of the board, I'm answerable to the shareholders. And the principal shareholder is here today, so I hope he thinks we're doing a reasonable job and we're spending his money well. Uh, and uh, Jeremy, come and uh, tell everybody what a mess I've made of it. <laughs> <laughs> So th thanks very much, Mike. The, the, um, the thought that you, of all people, were in any way answerable to anybody else is quite a <laughs> <laughs> remarkable statement. Um, but anyway, you can believe it if you want. Um, it's a great pleasure to join. Sorry, I couldn't join all day. I, I was at a, another meeting which was trying to bring together um, biological, nuclear and cyber threats and trying to find a horizontal platform that could deal with all of those. Um, so if you think you've got challenges in Biobank, imagine what that is uh, like. Um, I think we owe a huge tribute to the visionary people that established Biobank, um, the volunteers that are part of it. But, but can I just... I've inherited this. I've been at Wellcome, as you know, for about four years now, but so I take no credit for the initiation. And it's the initiation, I think, of that vision which is so critical, because those of us that follow on are really just standing on the shoulders of the giants that established it. And that vision was truly remarkable, I think. And, and not just ahead of its time, but way ahead of its time. Uh, and people even now are just waking up around the world to the prospects of, of copying uh, similar things. Uh, but Biobank has without doubt set the standards for the way the world uh, looks at this. But it is only 12 years old. And if you think that, I think I'm right in saying the, the youngest individual that was joined it was 40 years old. So this is likely to go to, what, 20 66, I'll be just over 100 at that point. Um, uh, it's going to go on for a very long time. And, and some of the words, even in the time I've been here, that have been talked about by the presenters, those words would not have been used in common parlance when this biobank was established. You're changing not only health and medicine, you're changing language and the way and culture and the way people think about health. That is a remarkable. I doubt if the Wellcome Trust and the MRC and all the other partners will invest anything like this which will have a bigger impact on human health uh, in the coming years. That's the scale of it. It's also a little bit difficult to think forward for the future. And I think this is critical when you think about the structure of Biobank and how it goes forward. Um, if you think about, again, the things that have been talked about today, and they would have been unimaginable when this started in 2006, and the pace of change is getting ever faster. Uh, so what does Biobank need to have in order to be able to have been positioned to maximise that new technology coming in? And it's not predictable. You can predict a few years out, a few months out, but you won't be able to predict what is 2025. And most importantly, you won't be able to predict the most exciting things. So whatever you do, don't get constrained by a governance system which seeks to overly control what you do. In other words, keep the funders as far away from it as you possibly can. <laughs> You need to be, have the freedom to be creative. There is no other structure really like this in the UK at least and probably around the world. And the big, big feature is the creativity and the freedom to explore and to do things which no funder, if they had any sense, would fund. It has to be open, but you've also got to work out how to work with industry. It has to be diverse because the best ideas looking at the front row and the gender balance of that are not going to be necessarily it is remarkable. No, there is one lady. Hi. Um, that is not going to be the future. The future is going to be bringing a more diverse group of people into this to maximise the use of what is there. And I think that is where the future lies. So looking forward to the future, I think it's critical to go back to your roots, remember what the values were that set it up in the first place, that vision. The development of trust with all the individuals that are contributing to it as volunteers or the scientists around the world that are using it, being open to the world, but also linking very critically, when I think if I had an MRC hat on, with the life science industrial strategy in the UK, because that will be something of the feeder for the long-term future. 
Leadership is absolutely critical. Succession planning is absolutely critical when you think this will go to 2066 and beyond. And the next generation of people will need different skills to the current generation. And how do we make sure, as from your side or from the funder's side, that we're doing the right things now to bring the right people into this who will have the skills to take it forward 10, 20, 30 or 40 years from now? You've done a remarkable job. Everybody is incredibly proud of it. Welcome. We are committed to buy a bank for the very long term. In fact, for the duration of it, assuming you remain as productive and as open as you are today, just to give you that slight edge. It is remarkable to hear some of the presentations. I didn't think I would ever hear, as a neurologist, Paul Matthew saying that neurologists could learn from other specialties. But I did hear it here. <laughs> and if that has changed the culture of neurologists, then gee, Biobank has probably really achieved. So congratulations. Sorry I couldn't join for the whole day, but, but it's been an inspirational couple of hours to be here. And thank you very much. And I believe the bar is now open. Thank you.